From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Betsy Walker, Mr. Dollar. I'm up and around. Yes, thanks for calling. Have any time this morning? I think so. If possible, I'd like to come over to your apartment again and take an inventory of the gifts that Sheldon Forbes sent you. That'll be all right, sure. About an hour? Sure. Uh, I couldn't sleep much last night thinking about all this. I mean... He stole that money because of me. You mustn't feel that way, Miss Walker. He knew what he was doing. You had no part in the theft. I have the gifts. Well, we may have to take those away from you. I don't mind that. I... You said he tried suicide. How is he this morning? I just talked to the hospital. He's going to be all right. But he has to go to prison? Yes. (sighs) Funny world, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter. More expenses. Items 11 to 16. $78.40. Cab fares, meals, accounting services, legal services, cab fares, and more cab fares. I made a comprehensive inventory at Betsy Walker's apartment and spent the rest of the day tracking down the places where the items had been purchased and ascertaining their retail values. Total, $2,780 worth of gifts bought with stolen money. Betsy Walker also told me that Sheldon Forbes had made appointments to meet her at various times at very expensive restaurants in New York. She had never once kept any of these appointments, but a check with the Waldorf, 21, the Stork, and several other places revealed that Forbes had always made elaborate arrangements to entertain her. His restaurant bills came to $835. The florist bill, $670. Total amount spent, $4,285. Total amount stolen, $4,285. $4,285. Century Styles Incorporated footed the bill in his unsuccessful courtship of Betsy Walker. Hello. Hi. Remember me, Forbes? Sure, insurance man. Well, what now? How do you feel? Okay. You saved me, didn't you? I suppose so. Why? Same reason you'd save a man who was dying. You know what I've been doing? What? Answering the questions you wouldn't answer. I met Betsy Walker. What? My job, Forbes. I had to. How did you know about her? I followed you night before last. When you got out on bail, I saw you go to the theater. Listen, you had no right to go to her. You have no right to involve her in any of this. Why didn't you think of that a month or so ago? It's the company's money you've been spending on her. I had every right, as unpleasant as it is. I suppose she knows all about me now. That's right, all. Boy, I sure must look like the prize sucker of all time. <laughs> Just to handed her a laugh. She didn't think it was one bit funny. And Forbes, I don't think it's funny either. Then what are you standing here for, lording it over me? I'm not doing that at all. I'm just here to let you know how things are at the moment. All right. How are things? Well, first off, we took back all the gifts you gave her. Dirty scum. Don't get mad at me, Forbes. Get mad at yourself. I didn't steal the money and try to impress her. You did. Why didn't you leave it alone? What difference does the money make to you? Nothing to me, but it means something to my insurance company. They still want it back. And they'll get as much back as they can. Well, swell, good for that. What do you want now? Your signature. Hmm? I think I trace most of it down. You want to look this over? Go ahead. Uh, Those figures about right? I suppose so. I didn't keep track. Approximately? I suppose so. You're pretty thorough, aren't you? We have to be. Will you sign this? No. It'll help to clear up our bookwork a little. What difference does it make now? We've got you cold. Okay. What difference does it make? Give me. Okay, thanks. It's all it means to you, isn't it? Hmm? Dollars and cents. 
Dollars and cents that were stolen, Forbes. Remember that. You wouldn't let me forget it. No, I wouldn't. You did the dumbest thing in the world. You stole nearly $5,000 trying to make an impression on a girl who didn't want to have a thing to do with you. You went about it wrong from top to bottom. You've acted like the great stone face ever since you've been found out. You wouldn't bother telling me about it. I had to go out and find out myself. Off the record, Forbes, what'd you do? See her on the stage one night? No, at the office. Office? Your office? No, not exactly. Ellie was having a showing for some buyers from the West Coast one day a few weeks ago. For those kind of showings, he hires models from the agency. Betsy's listed with one of the agencies. You know, she acts and sings and models. Oh, sure. Well, I happened to be upstairs when the showing was going on. There were a lot of publicity people there taking pictures and so on. And I saw her. She was wearing a black... a black dress, and her hair was soft. She's got a smile like... All the sun risings are... Sounds silly. Not at all. It's just that I never in all my life saw anyone like it before. Yeah. I don't know how it is with other guys, but she was for me from then on. I, I couldn't get her out of my mind. I found out her name, and then I found out she worked in that show at the Empress Theater. Yeah. All I had was her name. I, I didn't know how to go about meeting her. I... I just didn't know. You figured a little money might attract it to you. I've heard that's the best way to do it. That's one way. Not the best way, kid. Probably not. The best way I could think of. What did you think about taking the money? I thought I'd be able to stick it back. I guess I really didn't think much beyond just meeting her. Having her look at me the way I... I wanted her to look at me. <laughs> what? It was the wrong way to go about it, sure. But then did you ever think of my alternative? Hmm? I'd thought of it. I pictured myself knocking on a door one night, and I could see her answering it. I'm Shelley Forbes, Betsy, I'd say. Clothes don't make them. And I'd say, while well, she sort of took in my tweed suit and the only coat I've got to my name. Listen, I'd say, I got an 8 by 10 apartment over on 59th Street. The halls always smell like cabbage, but I'm a heck of a fine guy. And I drive a 1946 Ford that misses a little, but it's good enough for us. And then I'd say... Why don't you toss on your mink and we'll go over to my dump and we'll have a bottle of beer and I'll tell you how much I love you. How about that? <laughs> Some alternative, huh? She makes more money in an hour than I make in a week. I couldn't even afford to keep her in cigarettes. Lord, I... I wanted her like nothing in my whole life. She might have taken you up on it, Forbes, if you'd put it that way. Yeah? What makes you think so? She wasn't impressed by any money or any gifts. <laughs> More than that, I met her. She's a pretty nice girl. Yeah. Up until the time I talked with Sheldon Forbes in the hospital, I'd always had my doubts about love happening at first sight. After my talk with him, I was convinced that it could and did happen to him. I was sorry that he didn't know quite how to handle it. I was also wondering if I'd been in his shoes, would I have done the same thing? Expense account item 17, $4.90. I sent a wire to my home office telling them that the recovery would be in the amount of something like $2,500, obtainable on the redeemable gift items recovered. After that, I went back to my hotel. I was surprised to find Betsy Walker waiting in the lobby. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Why, hello. I was afraid you might leave town. I wanted to talk to you. Sure, you just caught me. I was going upstairs and pack. What is it? Could we have a drink or something? Sure. <laughs> Expense account item 18, $2, dollars, two drinks. For Betsy Walker and myself at the hotel bar. It was midday, and there wasn't much action. She sat across from me, ordered an old-fashioned, and asked for a cigarette. Thank you. Sure. What'll happen to him? Forbes? Yes. Oh, he'll be sentenced Monday. They canceled the Friday scheduling because he was in the hospital. He'll go to prison? Yes. Have you seen him since he tried to kill himself? Just left him. I guess he feels awful. Yeah. I told you I haven't been able to sleep. Thinking about all this. Well, about him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Would he have to go to prison even if all the money was returned? 
Only half of it's redeemable. The rest, florist bills, restaurants and so on, just gone. How much does it come to, Mr. Dollar? Uh, short about 2000 roughly. If, well, if you had that money, what would happen to them? Oh, it'd be up to the court. I, I'd say he'd have a good chance of getting off if he changed his plea. Could I get him to change his plea? <laughs> I think you could get him to do anything. I want to pay it. You what? I want to pay that other 2000 for him and get him to change his plea. I'll make up the whole thing. Hey, now, look, Miss Walker, I, I know your motives might be the best, but you aren't responsible in any way for this man's actions. He stole money because of me. He tried suicide because of me. And now he's going to prison because of me. But you had nothing to do with it, no part of it. You may think I'm 22 years old. I'll be 29 next month. I'm not much of an actress or a singer or anything else. But I've been around this town and I know my way around. And I met all kinds. Whoever he is, whatever he's done, he's the first man I've ever known who actually went out on a limb for a girl he loved. I'm the girl and he's the man. You're serious. I probably won't remember his name a year from now. But that poor, stupid, wonderful dumbbell. He doesn't belong in any prison. He ought to get married to some nice girl somewhere. I want to help him get out of this trouble. Can I? Betsy, I... After all, he's given me something. Call it faith in mankind again, if you like. What's the kiss for? What you just gave me, Betsy. Faith. Expense account item 19, $48, hotel. Item 20, $37, meals. 21, $15, miscellaneous. 22, same as item 1, $28.63, fare back to Hartford. Total cost of investigation, $363.51. Remarks? She got Forbes to change his plea. She paid back the additional money. He comes to trial next week. He might get a suspended sentence. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, a trip south of the border where the flashing eyes of a dark-haired senorita spells plenty of, well, believe me, romance and trouble can go hand in hand. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Lillian Bayef, Sandra Gould, Jack Edwards, Herb Ellis, James McCallion, Parley Bear, John Stevenson, Howard McNair, Bob Bruce, and Junius Matthews. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>